Rachel's smile faded. She glanced at Annabeth, then back at Piper. Just a hunch. Something about this cabin and Percy's disappearance, they're connected somehow. I learned to follow my hunches, especially last month since the gods went silent. Went silent? Piper asked. Rachel frowned at Annabeth. You haven't told her yet? I'm getting to that, Annabeth said. Piper, for the last month? Well, it's normal for gods not to talk to the children very much, but we can usually count on some messages now and then. Some of us can even visit Olympus. I spent practically all semester at the Empire State Building. Excuse me? The entrance to Mount Olympus these days. Oh, Piper said. Sure, why not? Annabeth was redesigned Olympus after it was damaged in the Titan War, Rachel explained. She's an amazing architect. You should see her at the salad bar. Anyway, Annabeth said. Starting about a month ago, Olympus fell silent. The entrance closed and no one could get in. Nobody knows why. It's like the gods sealed themselves off. Even my mom won't answer my prayers. And our camp director, Dionysus, was recalled. Your camp director is the god of wine? Yeah, it's a long story, Piper guessed. Right, go on. That's it, really, Annabeth said. Demigods still get acclaimed, but nothing else. No messages, no visits, no sign from that the gods are listening. It's like something has happened. Something really bad. Then Percy disappeared. And Jason showed up on our field trip, Piper supplied, with no memory. Uh, who's Jason? Rachel asked. My... Piper stopped herself before she could say boyfriend, but the effort made her chest hurt. My friend, but Annabeth, you said Sahara sent you a dream vision? Right, Annabeth said. The first communication from the god in a month, and it's Hera, the least helpful goddess, and she contacts me, her least favorite demigod. She tells me I'll find out what happened to Percy if I go to Grand Canyon Skywalk and look for a guy with one shoe. Instead, I find you guys, and the guy with one shoe is Jason. It doesn't make sense. Something bad is happening, Rachel agreed. She looked at Piper, and Piper felt an overwhelming desire to tell them all about her dream, to confess that she knew what was happening, at least part of the story and that the bad stuff was only beginning. Guys, she said, I, I need to... Before she could continue, Rachel's body stiffened. Her eyes began to glow with a greenish light, and she grabbed Piper by the shoulders. Piper tried to back away, but Rachel's hands were like steel clamps. Free me, she said, but it wasn't Rachel's voice. It sounded like an older woman speaking from somewhere far away, down a long, echoing pipe. Free me! Piper McLean, or the earth shall swallow us. It must be by the solstice. The room started spinning. Annabeth tried to separate Piper from Rachel, but it was no use. Green smoke enveloped them, and Piper was no longer sure if she was awake or dreaming. The giant statue of the goddess seemed to rise from its throne. It leaned over Piper, its eyes boring into her. The statue's mouth opened. It breathed like ho its horribly thick perfume. It spoke the same echoing voice. Our enemy stir. The fiery one is only the first. Bow to his will, and the king shall rise, dooming us all. Free me! Piper's knees buckled, and everything went black.